Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this holy celebration of the birth of our Lord, known as Christmas. We're going to have a little non-traditional worship time this morning, uh, an informal gathering as we have assembled here. We'll have just a little bit of time of prayer, reflection upon the gifts of this season, and then I'll share a brief meditation on uh, our gospel lesson for this Christmas season today too. But as we're mindful, I want you to be mindful, and, I, and I'll open it up even to your thoughts about some of your fondest memories of Christmas. What makes this time of year so special to you or to your family? And that'll be in just a few moments. But let's reflect upon that as we prepare our hearts to worship and celebrate the gift of the Christ child, the birth of our Lord. Let's begin our time in prayer. Oh God, we bow in your presence in the sacredness of this space. It's holy not because so much of where we are situated, whether it be in the sanctuary or in our sacred space, wherever we're worshiping online today. It's holy because this is a venue in which you are present and we are present with one another. You tell us, you promise us, God, whenever two or more are gathered in your name, you are near. And we know and experience that presence and peace right now as we gather in your name. We ask on this day, God, that you fill us with an understanding and overflowing abundance of the gift of this season, the gift of you. The fruit of the spirit that you call us to live out into this world of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. May we, O oh God, as we pause and consider the blessings that we have in you this day, also be molded and made just a little more in your image, that as the world looks upon us, we become the Bible they read for some the light where there's darkness so that you may be glorified yes in your birth in your life-giving love in all ways in Christ we pray amen so I'm gonna begin as we have throughout Advent and Christmas lighting our Advent wreath today and as I expounded upon last night and spoke a bit about the themes of Advent, I want us to go a little deeper into Scripture about those four themes that culminate today in the Christ child and the gift of love. So does anyone remember what our first theme of Advent was that we celebrated? First candle. Y'all don't all speak at once, so it's the hope candle, right? The hope candle. And I want to share a little scripture from each of these themes that we focus on this morning. In Romans, Paul the Apostle, one of the great evangelists and promoters of our faith but also one of the great rebellious persons of our faith, right? Paul persecuted our Lord, had prison, or excuse me, Christians in prison, beaten, maybe even murdered. As we were gathering this morning, and I saw this uh, less than large crowd assembled, I was thinking, well, these are the real dedicated folks. But my dad come in here and said, oh, we just got the sinners here today. So we're a little bit of both, aren't we? We're the sinners and the saints. And isn't that who Paul was as the one who promoted our faith most of all? And isn't it reassuring to us that God could use someone like Paul in spite of his wandering ways, his uh, persecution of the faith, 
to transform him into the great messengers of love and hope that we have in our Lord. Paul says this in a letter that he wrote to the church in Rome. He said, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. As we think of those words in that first theme that has journeyed with us through Advent and Christmas season, hope. Paul is reminding us that when we have hope in God, we also have joy. Joy, a reassurance beyond circumstances of the true fullness of life. Happiness oftentimes is fleeting, right? And depending upon what we're going through at the time, our certain predicament, our situation, our family, our professional accolades, but joy transcends all of that. And Paul says, hope gives us joy in God. And we receive that joy through prayer, by petitioning God, walking with God daily, and in worship as corporate individuals and as those who worship in their own spiritual disciplines daily. So we celebrate this gift of hope that is found in our Lord, and then we also have a thing. Anybody remember what the next thing was of Advent? Oh, peace. Yes, joy and love. I'm going to give them all away. <laughs> These are gifts that come from above. Jesus Emmanuel came to be the light of the world. Reflected in me. Peace. What a gift of God. Once again, we turn to Scripture, and the Gospel writer Matthew speaks of this about peace. He says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. What a great gift those who bring peace in our world. To be looked at as the very children, those who look like God. If we think of children, they're ones who look like us. Sometimes they act like us, good and bad, right? They imitate what we do. And the gospel writer Matthew says that when we embody peace in this world... When the world looks upon us, maybe we're giving them some glimpse of our Lord above. That's the great gift that Jesus brought to this earth as God's child, as God's son, to offer peace, inner peace, yes, and peace without. Sometimes for us and the challenges of this broken world, right, the pressures and stresses and depressions and anxieties that certainly surely all of us face at some point in our journey sometimes we know what lack of peace is more than what peace is but when we have that knowing that God is with us in our circumstances to see us through them we indeed have the peace that comes from above may we be encouraged by Matthew to live out that peace for God's glory in the world around us. Okay, so we've spoken of hope, peace, and then we have a special candle, the peak candle, which is joy. The joy candle is unique, and uh, I've often wondered why does it stand apart as pink instead of purple? Anybody know? Not a trick question. Um, we think of purple oftentimes in our church, in our faith, as uh, a time of penitence, confession, repentance, turning more directly toward God and away from the things that separate us from God. But also purple is a sign of royalty, right? As Christ comes as king of all creation, 
the birth of the child, then we transition into this great gift of joy. One of my favorite scriptures about joy is once again from Paul's writing to the church in Philippi at a time when things weren't going so great for Paul. He was imprisoned. He was persecuted now as he had persecuted the church. His life was being threatened as he had threatened the lives of others. He was imprisoned. And at this very time, it's when Paul wrote one of the great passages and teachings of joy. When he said this, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So Paul is telling us that the great gift of joy that our God gives, that the Christ child brought into this world as an infant and nurtured us as God with us, even now as Emmanuel, that joy is a gift for us even today. And he tells us how to gain that gift by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving. Friends, during this holy time as we celebrate family gatherings, the joy of that, the challenges of that, of everybody being together, of cleaning up and cooking and running from this house to that, and the stressors, let's be honest, of this time. May we also pause in the midst of that and to give thanks for a Savior come down from heaven and for every good gift that we have, for as Paul said, the more thankful we are the more joy-filled we will be. Finally, the last theme of Advent that we have celebrated over these weeks was the fourth candle of love, the great gift of our faith, symbolized in the life-giving love that God would send His Son into our world, to be our Savior. And that Jesus, as that beautiful, vulnerable child, would ultimately embrace our vulnerability in this broken world to restore us. There's truly no greater gift of love for us. Paul said, as he described what love is in the church to Corinth, says this about love, as we strive, friends, as those who've received the love of Christ to live it out with family, friends, neighbor, enemy, those closest to us and those furthest from us. Hear this description of love. Love is patient, Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 13. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It is not irritable are resentful. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Is there any greater gift that we have from our Savior than that God would send His Son and not just to be Savior of the world, but to be love to the world? For scripture tells us that too, that God is love. Friends, even when we are unlovable, God's love never wanders or faints for us as his children. So finally today, we light our last candle. Bringing together all of these great gifts of our faith, hope, Peace, joy, and love are symbolized and united all in one, the Messiah, 
Lord of all creation, the Christ child. So we celebrate his love this day and the life we have in him. And we want to give thanks in prayer and share a bit of a prayer of confession. And then I want you to just, if you have one word, that's okay. Or if you want to say a sentence, that's okay too. But reflect with me just a moment some of your fondest memories of Christmas in this holy time. Let's pray together. Well, God, we celebrate this time of worship in your name as we have remembered the gifts that you brought to us in that first advent as the Christ child. And when you return to this earth, we will know the fullness of life found only in you, the hope, peace, and joy, and love that transcends all of our brokenness, restores us in your image forever. God, we do confess our lack of thanksgiving. We confess that our sinfulness is what separates us from you. Our selfishness, our greed perhaps, our lack of concern for our neighbor, those who are afflicted and persecuted, those who we judge as though we are the judge. Forgive us of our self-righteousness. Make us more in your image as we celebrate your gift in this Christmas season, and we be your gift to the world around us. In Christ's name, amen. All right, any fond Christmas memories come to mind this morning for you? Always the anticipation and the excitement of the moment. Ooh, I like that. Boy, it sounds like I prepared him, Price, didn't it? Okay, so to repeat that, Gerald said one of his fondest memories is the excitement and the anticipation of the moment. I like that a lot, right? That kind of speaks to not just uh, what we're doing now, but the expectancy of excitement of what's to come in our Lord as well. Great. Thank you for that. Any other fond memories of Christmas? Look at everybody and talk to them because you never know what's going to be the last time to see them. Always be good and love the ones around you because you don't know if they're going to be around next Christmas. And love your enemies and be kind to them because you never know when it's going to be their last time. Either. Wow, that's great. So be mindful and appreciative of those who are in our lives, right? Because we don't know. We can't take that for granted that they will be with us next time. Isn't that too? See, every one of these memories, they point us back to the hope we have in our Lord. Because as we do see relationships, as we grow older, fleeting in this earth, through the hope of our Lord, we know that in that great heavenly reunion, there are no more goodbyes. There are no more growing old. There's only life, love, and joy forever. So we cherish, Randall, you're right. Those moments with family and friends during the holy holiday season. Thank you. Any other fond memories? Speaking of cherish, uh, I was talking to my dad earlier and he and Papa. Oh. I remember uh, we decorated in the room with like, the wreath on the board and all. Also gifts for other kids. Yeah. I wish I had known her. I've heard so many good things about her. Wow. That's beautiful. And and passed on that love of music to you and John. And well, she taught me many things. Uh, wow. I still, uh, I don't want to say post, post folks, but it was kind of tuned. Wow, 
Clay was reflecting there, he couldn't hear all of that, of his Mimi, his grandfather, and just those little things that, like folding clothes, putting the wreath on the door, decorating. But aren't those the big things? When we think of those little things, that wonderful gift that they live the faith into us and be, at, be in ways beyond what words can express. Thank you for that, Clay. Any other fond memories? Elizabeth? Say it again, I'm sorry. Wow, how about that? Amen. Elizabeth said this was their engagement 20 years ago today. And she's still smiling. <laughs> yes, yes. This is not a memory. This is more a month that I can't share because it touched me so. Y'all smile this morning. Lucy was feeling well. And I said, Lucy, what's wrong? Mom was reflecting there, those of you who couldn't hear, about our little Lucy, six years old, said that she was filled with tears on Jesus' birthday, but not sad tears, happy tears. That's a gift from above that we share in and worship. You know, one of my great appreciations as we're thinking of these is just being able to be together again. In worship after COVID, that time of separation and sickness. And I'll never forget as we shared in our uh, lessons and carols this year, John and me and others and, and uh, Grace Ann, when we had our very first practice, many of our choir members were brought to tears to be able to be together again to celebrate the joy of this season. You know, in each of these memories that you've shared here today, I didn't hear anything about the great presents we got for Christmas, big trips that we took on Christmas. It was about the relationships. It was about people, right? Those are the great gifts. Christmas that we share, family, friends, love, little things that are the big things in life. Isn't it beautiful? As we shared last evening in our gospel reading, and I won't read it again, I'll just reflect on it a bit. Our gospel reading from Luke of Joseph and Mary journeying from their home in Nazareth. Imagine how challenging that must have been. Those of us who found it hard driving in the cold weather and the sleep maybe the other evening, imagine them journeying for several days on a donkey, married great with child, the persecutions they'd certainly faced, her trying to explain her pregnancy as an unwed mother and to say that she had God's son. Those who thought they had lost their minds, lost their morals, were persecuting or an embarrassment of the faith. But in that journey, Mary and Joseph, they too were committed to relationships, to family. Mary, when she was told she would be the mother of the Christ child says, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be done unto me according to what you say. And Joseph, his commitment to family, as we focused on in our sermon last week, it was his commitment 
to obedience to the angel of the Lord who said, Joseph, don't worry about it. Don't be afraid. Trust me. And together, they joined their love for each other and for God and for God's Son and did this. They nurtured the very gift of heaven to become our Savior on the cross of Calvary. So as we close out this devotion time, let's remember that little acronym of the Son that Mary taught us how to serve God more fully and serve those around us for his glory. Joseph gave us the O of Son who practiced his obedience to God in the noises and the busyness and the craziness of this world. He sought most of all to hear God's still small voice and to follow in his way. And finally, they joined together their commitment to family of the Son by embodying the end of Son and nurturing our Savior into adulthood as he became the gift of all creation who trust in him for life evermore. So as we prepare to know the fullness of this day and we go and embody Christ love in the world around us, may we make new memories and be mindful of old memories as we share in the hope, peace, joy, and love with all around us. Amen? Let's pray. God, we thank you for this time that we have gathered in your name this day. We thank you for giving us memories to reflect upon those great gifts of Christmas past and the greatest gift that we will experience in Christmas future when we gather with loved ones and friends in that heavenly realm where there are no more goodbyes. There's only life, love, and joy forever given to us through the Messiah, the Savior, the Christ child. We gratefully celebrate the birth, the beginning of our faith, and the beginning of our claim as being your children because you sent your son into this world as a beautiful child, vulnerable to complete and conquer our vulnerability as your children forever. May we live out his love in the world around us that you may be glorified on this holy day and always. In Christ we pray. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace and love the world.